Hello world, welcome to the 238th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a completed Flask project and upload it to a free hosting website. For, for me, I'm using it as beta testing. And so first off, we'll start off with your completed Flask project. So congrats on completing a Flask project. The project I'm working on is I created a clone of an old website called Drudge Report where I'm taking all the local news and web scraping it and displaying it. So I have a completed Flask project. So I have a scraper that scrapes all the websites and if you want to know more about that you can click on the video here or in the description where I go into how I do that. Then I save these results to a JSON and then I have this Flask update, this Flask website that imports the JSON file and then I have a CSS file and a home file. So depending on how your completed Flask website looks congrats on completing it if you want to see what mine looks like we can go ahead and run it so this shows up in your development server which means it's just running off your console so here we go it it's just a centralized location of business articles together and you can click on it but this is just running on my local machine right here and so let's quit this so that's the first step is uh, complete your Flask project. This isn't going to be a Flask tutorial. And so you'll need to, uh, so while we're in PyCharm, you're going to have to make a requirements.txt file. So you can do that by just right clicking here and pressing new uh, file right here and then name it requirements.txt. Okay, so you can go to File, Settings, Python Interpreter. Uh, you should have a gear sign here if you uh, just added a normal interpreter and it says you can uh, create the requirements file. So that's another way to do it as well. And so for my Flask website, uh, I didn't have a lot of requirements. So I just created it on GitHub. So that is step two. So go ahead and log into your GitHub account. So here's my GitHub. Uh, follow me if you uh, haven't at bjones 6 here. Uh, and so that you can go to repositories and you can go to new. And then name your repository. You can add a readme if you want. Uh, I make mine private and then create a repository. And then once you've done that, so I called mine SBC News. So what I like to do, you can connect through PyCharm here, uh, create Git repository, and then it'll have you connect to GitHub. But I don't think that's any quicker than doing it like this. The good thing is you can just commit files straight from PyCharm if you want. But let's say we're just going to build it here. So the first thing you're going to do is go to add file, upload files, and then choose your files. And so in your wherever you store your PyCharm projects, if that's what you're using, navigate to the folder that's your project. And then I uploaded this, uh, this project called Financial Gene Project has more files than just this website. But for you, if you just have website, uh, go ahead and do your .py and then whatever other files that you need. So don't worry about the static and templates yet. So for mine, it was just the .py, the .py file, Drudge Clone and Scraper. You press open and it uploads them. So as you can see, I have the .py, the .py here. Um, so mine uses articles.json, so I open that as well. And then from here, you'll need to make the requirements file. So to do that, you can go add file, create new, and then just call it requirements.txt. 
and then you can just copy and paste your requirements here. So I don't need to do that. So what yours might look like is like this is flask. I use requests and beautiful soup for my scraping. And then you have to manually type this in G unicorn. Okay. So in your requirements text, whatever, whatever libraries that your flask website uses, put those in here and then also add G unicorn. You can just type it in like that and then you can uh, save it. So I already had mine in there. So you could save that. So now we have your .py files that are necessary, any other files that are necessary, and now your requirements.txt. Then go ahead and add file, create new file and call it proc file, P-R-O-C-F-I-L-E. No, no dot anything. And in it, you're going to want to do, and I'll put this in the description so you can just copy and paste it, web colon g unicorn or web colon space g unicorn space the name of the dot py file that has this right here if name equals main app dot run so mine is drudge clone dot py so my proc file says drudge clone colon app no spaces and then you save it and that's it that's all you need in that file so remember it's the file the dot py without dot py on your whatever file has the main, uh, main on there so now we have the dot py files the py files any other relevant files your code needs this proc file the requirements.txt now you can't just right click here or here and go add folder. So a Flask website requires you to have this static folder within the CSS. And then this is where you put your .css file. And then likewise, templates has your home.html file, right? This is where you put all your HTML. So to create that in GitHub, you go to add file, create new file, and then this is where you can add your your folder so static and then put a backslash on it and it creates the folder for you so static and then just copy this so css uh, backslash main.css and then here just copy and paste everything that's in your main right here like this you know, just copy it straight from PyCharm and then copy it and paste here. All right. So if you try to upload it, right, so let's go to here. Well, let's go back to what yours will look like. If you go to upload files and then choose your files, it's not going to allow you to just upload a folder, right? It's looking for a file. So if you go static CSS main and upload it this way, instead of how I just showed you, your folders are going to, your CSS folder and your home.html will be in this, this area here. And that's not how Flask works. It needs to be in this specifically named folder, static CSS and templates. Okay, so just make sure that is a common mistake I've read. All right, so now we have completed the PyCharm, right? You have your completed flask before you even watch this video. You created your .txt file. Then you went to GitHub. You uploaded all your necessary files. You created these, your proc file, requirements.txt. And now we can go to render. So it's just render.com, sign up, um, and then you'll need to connect your GitHub to it. And so mine's going to look different because it doesn't go to the main website, but you're going to create a new. So to do that for me, since I already have a dashboard, is you're going to create new and then you're going to go to web service. So I put the Git provider here. Um, yours will look different. So 
go ahead and your GitHub will be here. Find the repository that you want to click and then click on it. So this is what mine looks like. So language, go ahead and leave it Python 3. Branch, I believe this is defaulted to main. The region won't be filled in, don't worry about that. The root directory, if this uh, shows up on yours, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put dot like that, dot backslash. And then requirements.txt, this build command, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I did not put that in there. The start command renders run this command. So on yours, put G unicorn and replace it with your .py file that has the main function in it. I collected free. I did not put on anything in environmental variables. And then I deployed my web service. And what it does is it deploys for you. So if I go deploy latest commit, well, actually, I want to do that with you right now. So upload files, upload files. So I'm in my GitHub. I did a new JSON file today. So let's open it. Okay, commit changes. It's going to overwrite that one. As you can see, that is now. So my website is live, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. So on yours, it'll say deploy at the bottom. So I'm going to say deploy latest commit. And yours for the first time is going to look just like this. And then it's going to build it for you, right? So it's going to, just like the console of your PyCharm, it's going to build it right in front of you. So um, here it is. It's yours is going to, it's going to pip install all of your required things. And you see how mine says build successful. That's the first way you know something's wrong. So if you get errors, then something is wrong with how you did your render. What I had to do was that root directory, it's dot and then backslash. If you have anything else in there, then it'll mess up. So if you look online, if you Google it or go to ChatGPT, it'll tell you to type in uh, dot backslash uh, build don't do that just dot backslash like I just showed you and then this one right here when I showed you in the other thing it was G unicorn and it defaults to app colon app you need to change that to drudge clone or whatever your dot py file is and those were the only two things I had to do and now we have our own website running so we can click on here and for the first time for years, it might take a while to uh, start. If it does, we can go down here and just like your normal console, you can see it's doing the gets uh, as I click on it here. So if I click here, okay, and then click back, go back to render. So it has the gets on there. And now you can share this with your friends. Just know that the free instance goes pretty slow on the first time so if you send it to your friends and say hey check out my website it's so cool uh they're gonna say uh, it doesn't work but you just have to give them a chance for the first time and that is how you publish your completed flask website on render and now you can upgrade if your if your website takes a lot more than that so as you can see my metrics aren't growing yet, but if so, I would have to upgrade my instance to a not free version of it. So that's Render. I'm not sponsored by Render. I just um, am showing you this because this is what I did. And I hope this helps somebody. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. If you're running into any errors, uh, go ahead and shoot it to me and I'll do the best I can. Uh, if you're new to my channel, I am a novice programmer learning everything on my own. And uh, please like this video if it helped you. 
go ahead and share your links in my uh, comment section. I want to support people as much as I can. And let me know if this helps you. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.